So what we did is we took the delay dime 82, uh, placed the CPU uh, within the delay dime 82 with the arrow corresponding from the CPU exactly to that on the delay dime 82. We placed the slider in, uh, put in uh, the screw, and using the analog bolt, we slowly tightened the slider uh, until we saw the IHS move off the centre of the CPU and therefore the CPU had been deleted. We slowly undid the bolt and removed the um, slider. Once we'd done that, we, we uh, re carefully removed the IHS from the CPU and we removed the old TIM, uh, cleaned in with the contact cleaner on both the IHS uh, and the die itself. Once we'd done that, we used uh, the old uh, CPU socket. Obviously, you could use something like a blunt knife or even a razor blade, taking care of it particularly uh, careful on those things to scratch off the old glue on both the IHS uh, and the PCB. We also uh, then, again, uh, just made sure we got rid of any of that uh, dirt from the old glue on, on uh, both surfaces. Then we uh, noted that next to the die on the CPU, we had uh, three resistors, which uh, could possibly be shorted by the conductive liquid metal uh, compound. And we isolated that or insulated it using uh, some nail polish. You can also use some kind of uh, silicon insulin insulator, or you can use uh, something like uh, super glue to do that. Uh, I chose today to use the nail polish uh, because it dries a little bit faster than the other two. So we quickly uh, insulated that using a very, very, very small amount of uh, the nail polish. Once we've done that, we put the CPU PCB to one side uh, to let that dry. I went back to working on the IHS. Uh, the IHS, we then used an old uh, washing up sponge uh, or something similar, some part of Brillo pad to clean off any remaining glue that we could see and also to buff the area on the IHS itself. Uh, to a mirror finish, but also creating very small channels in the copper of the IHS where the liquid metal could flow and indeed stick to uh, to give again even better thermal conductivity between the liquid metal and the die of the CPU. Once we've done that again, we gave it a really good clean uh, to ensure that there's no uh, debris or contaminant going to uh, get into the liquid metal. Then we switched our attentions back then to the uh, PCB uh, of the CPU, checking that the nail polish was completely dry. Once we checked it was, we again cleaned the die. Uh, I can't stress enough how the necessity for clean surfaces is and no contaminants uh, for the liquid metal. We then applied the uh, liquid metal conductor in a really small amount on the surface of the die itself initially, uh, spreading it using small circular movements uh, and checking that there's a, a mirror finish on the top and that it's done uh, nice and evenly. Uh, again, less is more in this case, but you still need enough to make sure it's going to conduct. So we then turned our attentions again back to the IHS, which we'd obviously previously polished, uh, and applied the liquid metal also in a rectangular uh, segment in the center of that, roughly in line where the CPU die would be, uh, taking into account that we knew that the resistors had been uh, insulated. We could uh, definitely make sure we did a larger rectangle than the die itself uh, without uh, worrying about anything shorting out. Again, we, we noted that the liquid metal was flowing, really flowing nicely on the IHS, so we knew we prepared it well and cleaned it well. From there, we then uh, went to uh, re-glue the IHS back on the CPU, which will make it easier to put back in the socket. In this case, uh, we wanted to gl glue it back to make sure our uh, socket orientation was absolutely perfect. And to do that, we put the CPU back into the, the Dilla Dimit 2. Uh, the PCB, again, with the arrow in line with the uh, arrow on the Dilla Dimit 2, the arrow on the PCB, that is. Once we'd done that, we placed uh, the uh, aligning tool uh, that comes with the Dilla Dimit tool into the Dilla Dimit 2 so we know exactly where to put the IHS. We applied a very thin layer of the silicon glue. Uh, you can use other silicons, which we recommend because they're soft and then it's really easy to re delid if you wish at any stage uh, to, to make any modifications once you've tested uh, the temperature of the cores. So we use that, but some people are also using super glue, which I won't recommend, but it does work. We then applied that to a very, uh, in a very thin layer to the lip just inside the IHS. Once we'd done that, we, uh, are, we checked uh, the orientation of the IHS, making sure that the writing's at the top of the CPU 
uh, reads down towards the arrow and placed it in within the delimate uh, direct die frame which aligns the CPU. Once we've done that, we then uh, place the clamp on and clamp the CPU down in the middle. Once you get to the bottom, don't overturn or as it can uh, obviously compress the CPU too much uh, by the PCB or it can uh, cause the IHS to twist a little bit. So just applying a, a, maybe a quarter of a turn after it gets a little bit difficult there in terms of pressure. Then we removed uh, the die frame uh, so that if any silicon does indeed come out from underneath the IHS due to the pressure, it doesn't glue uh, the, orient if you like, the IHS orientation device or the die frame, as I just called, if it doesn't glue that onto the CPU itself. Uh, and now we're waiting five minutes or so to uh, let the silicon set. 